What up folks, Alex here, I hope you're all good. In this video, we're gonna be doing a quick comparison between the free and paid studio versions of DaVinci Resolve to see if the upgrade may be worth it for you. So let's say, for example, you're currently using the free version to create some YouTube videos, some vlogs, or some family videos. Maybe you have a hobby, you're a drone user, you use a GoPro, that sort of thing. We're gonna see whether the upgrade might be worth it for you. Now, if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, any comments or feedback down below, and if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe. Right, with that out of the way, let's get on to the first point, H.264 GPU Accelerated Decoding. Most consumer level cameras, like mirrorless, digital SLR, GoPros, phones, that sort of thing, they use the H.264 video compression system. So the video is compressed within the device, and then your video editor has to decode it or decompress it before you can start editing. Now, within DaVinci Resolve Studio, under Preferences and Decode Options, you've got this here. Decode H.264 or 265 using hardware acceleration, and then in my case, NVIDIA. Now, what that essentially means is DaVinci Resolve Studio can utilize the dedicated video decoding chip found within your GPU to actually perform that decoding process, freeing up your CPU and your GPU to do other things, making the whole process that little bit faster. Now this option isn't available within the free version, and from what I can gather online, the free version will use your GPU to an extent, but it can't actually use that built-in dedicated hardware acceleration. And the result is much smoother and faster video editing on the timeline within the edit tab. You're less likely to have any hiccups, you're less likely to have any dropped frames, and the whole thing just feels smoother and faster to use and it's quite a big noticeable improvement over the free version. Now it's actually difficult for me to demonstrate that so you just have to take my word for it, but it really does make a significant difference. Number two, much faster output thanks to GPU accelerated encoding. So in the free version, when you go to export a video, there's no options for what you wanna use, whether it's the CPU or the GPU, it'll just use the default, which is generally the CPU. In the studio versions, you have the option to change between the CPU or your GPU, your graphics card. And using your graphics card is considerably faster. Let's open up DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how significant of a difference it really can make. This is a project that I set up previously. It's 10 minutes long, as you can see, and the timeline is set to 4K. We've got 4K video footage, H.264 straight from my camera. We've also got some titles, as well as some cutouts and some overlays from different backgrounds, as well as some fusion transitions. And as you can see, we've got an adjustment clip here, which has got some color grades on. So with all that out of the way, let's hop into the deliver tab. Codec is H.264. The encoder we're gonna leave as native. That's where you'd select either native or NVIDIA. We'll do in native for now. Resolution, 4K, frame rate, 24, and the quality is gonna be left to best. So we're gonna add that to the render queue and see how long that takes. Now, while that's going, I just want to show you this. As you can see, my GPU is doing a little bit. It's doing 40, 50%-ish, but most of the work is being done by my CPU, which is currently running at 100%. And there we go. That took a total of 16 minutes and 22. So we're gonna run the exact same thing. We're not gonna change anything apart from the name. We're gonna keep the location exactly the same, and we're gonna change the encoder from native to NVIDIA. We're gonna add that to the render queue and then start the render. And while that's going, I'm just gonna show you this again. And you can see it's all flipped over. Basically the GPU is running at near 100%, while the CPU is only running at 30-ish, 35%. So most of the work now is being done by my NVIDIA GPU. So let's see how long this takes. That took just eight minutes and 18 seconds. So pretty much half the time, so 100% faster so that for every single project that you do if you're editing and exporting on a daily basis can stack up to a considerable amount of time really quite quickly number three effects now the first thing to mention is the studio version doesn't get any additional titles or transitions or any of those sort of things everything that you get within the free version is the same within 
the studio version. Now the titles and transitions as you already know aren't that great but you do also get access to Fusion so you can create your own titles and transitions or you can download packs to import all that sort of thing so actually there's a reasonable amount that you can do within the free version of DaVinci Resolve. However the studio version does have a bunch of additional features and effects which are really really useful. Now I'm not going to go through every single one because there's actually a whole lot but we are going to hop into DaVinci Resolve I'm going to show you some of the key ones brief description of what they're doing, a real quick demonstration as well to see if any of them are important to you. Now the first one I'm going to show you, the tilt shift blur. Now you can do this manually, I've actually made a video on it in the past, but with studio it's much easier, you can just grab this tilt shift blur, drag it onto your footage like so, and then you've got this tilt shift effect. You can open up the inspector, go to open effects, and then you can mess around, you've got different types of blur, blur strength, iris, you can change the depth of field, you can do loads of different things to create the specific look that you want. We're going to stick on this bit of footage, we're going to scroll up until you see these. You've got lens flare and lens reflections. So lens flare, we'll just drag that on there, really simple. It's a simple lens flare effect. Lens reflections, we'll put that one on there as well. Gives you this light leak lens reflection effect, which will move around throughout the image. And again, you can adjust it however you want. I'm going to move on to this skateboard clip now. This one is one of my favorites within here. I'm going to scroll down until I get to analog damage and I'm going to drag that one on there. This one's really cool because so we go to open effects, you've got preset, custom and you've got all these different types of analog damage. Early TVs, black and white TV, clean VHS, security camera etc. So if I go to security camera it'll give us a security camera look. 1960s black and white, we get that with the frame. 1980s, clean VHS. So there's all these pre-built effects which can look really cool and you can apply them really easily. Next up, we've got speed warp. So if we have a look at this clip here, this has already been slowed down and it looks like so. If we slow that down to 20%, we get this footage which is really janky because obviously it's too slow for my timeline, there's not enough frames. If we give that a click in the inspector, we can open the retime and scaling. Retime process, we can set that to optical flow. Now optical flow will essentially try and smooth the frames together to give us a smoother slow motion effect. Now as you can see, it's sort of working, but it looks a bit janky, there's lots of artifacts going on. However, if we change the motion estimation to be speed warp, this will do a much better job. It will essentially create the missing frames to give us a much better look. Now this is really, really intensive on your computer, so it will take a long time to render. Now as you can see, it's not perfect, but it's done a much better job of filling in those gaps to give us some sort of smooth slow motion from a clip which didn't have enough frames to be slowed down. Now also still within the inspector, you've also got lens correction. Lens correction is a bit of a pig to do anywhere else within DaVinci Resolve, but if you've got the studio version, you can just come down to lens correction, you can hit analyze, it'll analyze your footage, and it will apply the lens correction it thinks needs applying. Now, it's not actually done a great job on this, it's gone way overboard, so what we can do is bring the distortion down until we're happy, we can get rid of any fish eye effects which we may have from our GoPro or our action cameras, and get the footage that we want nice and easily, nice and quickly. That's also really quickly, it'll play back at full speed because it's not actually that resource heavy whereas if you try and do the same thing in fusion it can be really choppy. Now that's just a selection of some of the effects you get within the edit tab there's actually even more things which you get within the color tab which are only available within the studio version so again let's hop in there and have a quick look at those. So sticking with this footage from the bike we're going to jump into the color tab and we're going to come down here and click on this icon here for motion effects. Now within here you've got noise reduction and you've also got motion blur. So if you wanted to add some additional motion blur to this footage, we can do really easily. But the type, so faster or better, that's basically the quality, will go better. And then you've got the range, large, medium or small, and then you can just adjust the amount of motion blur within there. So we can see here on this tree, there's not much, too much there, and we can just add that if you want to. And if we hit play, we've got considerably more motion blur. Now that's not the best footage for it because it's really, really jumpy but you get the idea, you can add additional motion blur to really give that sense of speed within your footage. 
Now for the noise reduction, again, it's really easy. You can just change your frames here. Again, you've got type, you've got range, and then you can adjust the luma and the chroma and the motion to just remove any noise from your footage. Next up, we've got the object removal tool, which will allow you to take footage like this with this car driving along this road and really quickly turn it into footage like this, which is the exact same clip, just with the car removed. And that's actually quite easy to do. So we're just gonna open that in the color tab. We're gonna set up a real basic frame. We're gonna do this really quickly just for the demonstration. I'm not gonna to be too tidy with it at all. We're gonna track that and that will track the car throughout the footage. We can then right click on our node and we're gonna add a serial node in connect dots and then we're going to open up our open effects object removal and we're going to add it to there like so we can then click on scene analysis and what that's going to do is analyze the scene and remove whatever we had within that little tracking window and there you go that's finished now if we just go back and play again you can see it's actually done a pretty good job of removing the car there's a few little errors but overall not too bad, removing the car from that footage. There are of course other options for you to play with to make sure that it's perfect. And lastly, from within the color tab, we've got the face refinement tool. So I've got this clip here of this lady and we're just going to open up the open effects and we're gonna find the face refinement and just drop that onto our node. And then we're gonna click analyze. And what that will do, it will actually not just find this person's face, but it'll also outline the jawline, as you can see here, as well as the lips, the nose, the eyes, and the eyebrows. And it will track all of those elements throughout the entire duration of the clip. Now, once that's done, like it has here, we can just turn the overlay off so we can actually see what we're doing. And then we've got lots of options. So let's zoom in. We've got texture, so we can actually apply some additional smoothing. You can see on the forehead there, just to smooth the skin out. We've got color grading, so we can adjust the contrast, mid-tones, tints, etc. We can do eye retouching, so we can just increase the contrast, for example, the brightness, lips, blusher, forehead, cheek, chin, etc. And it'll all just be on the individual's face and it will be tracked throughout the footage. Number four, dual screen. Now I've got two screens set up here. I use a dual screen system. And it works with DaVinci Resolve, but we're completely honest, DaVinci Resolve isn't the best at this sort of setup. Neither the free version nor the studio version allows you to detach things and move it wherever you want it. You can resize some bits, you can do bits and bobs, but it's not that great. It's not as great as some of the other systems out there, which are completely modular and just allow you to take things and move them wherever you want them. The only additional thing you do get within the studio version is a video clean feed. Now what that means is you can do a full screen preview on one of your monitors without having to do any external capture cards or anything like that. You can use one of your monitors as basically an output viewer so you can see your final project all the time, full screen. It will remain on the screen as you go on your timeline, as you edit, as you drop effects, as you do titles, whatever it may be, you can view it all in real time on your clean feed. Really handy whether you're on the edit tab, editing your video, or you're doing some color correction within the color tab. Now, the last thing I want to mention, Blackmagic have made the free version of DaVinci Resolve a fully fledged, fully capable video editing suite. Not been hindered by ridiculous watermark. It's a really good system, even if you remain on the free version, and that should be applauded. On top of that, the studio version is a one-time fee. It's not a software as a service, as a monthly payment, or any of that nonsense which you get from a lot of places. It's a one-off, lifetime license, and that includes all the upgrades, includes everything going forwards. So I think that should be applauded as well, because that's not that common these days, and it's a much better way of doing things, in my opinion. So if you've made a lot of use of the free version, you're making money off the free version, for example, supporting Blackmagic by buying the studio version is something which you should definitely consider. You're not just doing it for the sake of it, because as I mentioned in this video, there are a hell of a lot of things which do make it worthwhile anyway, but showing some support to a company like Blackmagic, which is doing things the old fashioned way, is definitely not a bad idea at all. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If there's anything else you'd like to know about the studio version, make sure to hit me up down in the comments below. As I said at the beginning, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're new around here, 
don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you really enjoy this video and you want to thank me, you can buy me a coffee by using the link down in the description below. Thanks ever so much for watching. Take it easy. Until next time, see ya.